as you can see on my screen, the next session is with uh, Samreen Malla. So Samreen is a Q engineer at uh, Leapfrog, Sagnetic. So she so will be speaking about automated test using Power Apps test framework. So yeah, without further ado, let's uh, welcome Samreen. Over to you, Samreen. Yeah, thank you, Pradeep. Uh, let me quickly share my screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, it is. Yeah, so um, good morning. Uh, sorry, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Samreen, and uh, today I'll be talking about automating tests using Power Apps Test Framework, which is commonly known as Test Studio. So this is about me. I am Samreen, and I've been working at LeapFrog Technology as a quality assurance engineer, and I've been working with Power Platform and Dynamics 365 for the past two years now, and you can find me in LinkedIn and Twitter. So let's dive into uh, why we need testing at all. So Power Platform is a low-code, no-code system, and you know, a low-code, no-code no system. The whole essence of uh, it is, you know, it is very easy to develop. Uh, like, but it is as easy to develop. It is as easy to break because uh, you know uh, there are components that the pl Power Platform itself gi gives us uh, automatically. But uh, you know, as human beings, uh, we are bound to make uh, human errors, and we tend to forget the nitty-gritty details of software development. So uh, in order to uh, remove those kinds of barriers and um, develop a quality software, we need a testing for power, for low code, no code systems. And another thing is manual testing. Manual testing is um, is there and it's uh, quite good as well uh, reg for regression testings, but it is time consuming and it is rigorous. And like I said, we are human beings and we are bound to forget uh, the edge cases, the boundary points. So uh, manual testing is, you know, like there, but the test should be automated. So, uh, you know, Low code, no code system is emerging and it is in rise right now. And there are a lot of platforms that are developing uh, these low code systems. But uh, Power Platform has been here for a long time and it is a mature platform. So developing a test studio or a test framework around it is, I think, a very good step towards developing a quality software. Now, uh, moving on to Test Studio. What is Test Studio is it's a framework which has been built around the Canvas app. So uh, it is used for automating our test cases and a test. Uh, although it is still in an ex uh, experimental mode and it is, is uh, still in preview, uh, I think developing a whole test framework around the platform is a very nice step. Uh, it is something that you know uh, us Power Platform developers and Power Platform or low code, no code enthusiasts need to look out for. And you know, uh, Microsoft. One thing about Microsoft it, uh, is uh, it takes our feedback and it tries to improve on it, so we can uh, use Test Studio for uh, testing our applications and provide feedback uh, so that we can help Microsoft develop a more a robust framework around it. Now the components of test framework are like any other uh, testing framework. We have test cases. Uh, what is test case? Is a, it is simply a list of steps that are used to simulate the interactions with an application. So us testers use these test cases to interact with the application and see if the app breaks uh, in case of any um, unnecessary things or whatever. Any uh, test. So there's something called test stu test suite in uh, test studio. So what is test suite? Is it's a collection of test cases. So, uh, you know, in my application, I may have a registration form and then I may have something that allows my users to post something in my application. So, uh, what Test Suite does is it uh, categorizes my test cases. You know, if I have a registration, I have test cases for registration, then it allows me to categorize my test cases to a different, uh, different suites so that it is easy for me to manage my test cases. Uh, more about the studio is that uh, test cases and test suite that we have developed, the overall test, uh, is can be carried over from one environment to another. So if I have developed my test in my dev in, in the dev environment and I'm deploying my Canvas app to QA or UAT, then uh, you know my test cases are carried over to those environments. So it's uh, you know I don't need to keep on you know uh, putting on my test cases or manually entering my test cases for different environments. And I think uh, that is good. <laughs> it's uh, it's not available in the production environment yet, uh, but. Uh, I think uh, probably there is uh, work going on about uh, putting it in the test okay, pr production environment as well. And also, 
another thing, a good thing about Test Studio is that we can share our test uh, cases and test suites with our uh, teammates or our clients. So, you know, there is a simultaneous test going on about uh, the platform or the app. Oh, so the function in test cases, <clears throat> give me a minute. So um, like a power platform, you know, uh, I said already, uh, it's uh, built around the test, uh, built around the power platform. So any functions that we can use in our Canvas app can be used uh, in Test Studio as well. And there are four uh, main functions that are very common in Test Studio. So one is select. Select is simply a function that is used to uh, simulate the interactions with a uh, with the uh, button or screen. So you know, uh, used to simply uh, uh, used to simply simulate the you know interactions with buttons or clicks or tapping etc. Uh, set property is uh, used to simulate interactions with the input controls. So if I have a, a, a input a name in a data card or a input value, then uh, it is used to simply set interaction like that. Another is tracing. Uh, tracing is a debugging function and it's simply used to um, evaluate where the flow of my test case or where the flow of my application is. And assert is assert, right? <laughs> like um, I don't think there is any test without assert. So assert is simply used to verify if a condition is true or false. It's like, you know, any test, uh, any test uh, a tester creates is uh, like there is an expected outcome and there is an actual outcome. So comparing these expected outcome and actual outcome is is simply assertion, so uh, that's what it is. Now there are a lot of things uh, that uh, are uh, in the test studio, so let's uh, see they dive into the demo and I'll show you more about test cases. Uh, sorry. <laughs> what is this? I'll reshare my screen. Okay. Uh -oh. So oh, my screen is visible, right? Thumbs up if my screen is visible. Um, so this is my this is my application. Uh, it's nothing fancy. It, it just has two screens, uh, two screens that is a registration screen and a success screen. Uh, here I'll input uh, new items and I'll just register a new um, client. And in my SharePoint uh, list, this is the data source. Uh, can you see my data source? Yeah, so uh, my data source and in this data source, if I register a new user, uh, they'll simply uh, create a new row and my uh, user will be entered here. So for test studio here, let's go to file and in the settings we have advanced settings. Like I said, uh, test studio is still in preview mode, so all the way down to experimental features. Here is something known as formula level uh, error management. So uh, we need to turn this on uh, in order to have our test studio set up for our app. So uh, it's already turned on for me. Um, let's go back. And here in my app, what we can see is uh, in the side pane, we have uh, advanced, sorry. <coughs> what are you doing? Uh, in the side pane, we have advanced tools. So in the side pane uh, here, test uh, experimental, we can simply open test. Uh, what opening test does, it it, uh, it opens our test studio in a new tab, so it runs uh, in the same instance as our app is. So it's running and it's opening. Yeah, something about Microsoft that it should open by now, I don't know. Uh, what? <laughs> Sorry. So let's reload this. Give me a minute, guys. Please be patient. <laughs> okay. Something went wrong everywhere. I guess my internet just got disconnected or something. Looks like it. Huh. It's taking more time than necessary, so let's start here. Come on. One thing about Nepal's internet and Microsoft, <laughs> it's really slow. 
it should work. It was working a minute ago. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> And and by the way, I'm also on data. Right yeah, now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have taken a data instead of depending on my ISP, but here we have it. OK, so let's edit this app. OK, I hope now it works. So um, in the side pane, we have advanced tools. Uh, do I need to repeat what I just did? OK, let's repeat what I just did. So in my uh, app, let's go to files and in settings, we have advanced settings and down below in the experimental features, we have formula level error management and we need to turn this on in order to have our test studio set up for our app. OK, so let's go back to our app. And in the side pane, we have advanced tools and in the advanced tool here we'll have test. So open test. Opening uh, open test will simply redirect us to a different tab and here test studio will open um, in the same instance as our app is. I really hope this studio opens this time. Um, OK. Giving me a hard time. OK, it does. It, it opened. <laughs> OK, so it opened. OK, I don't want to have so many test suites already developed, but I'll simply delete it. So uh, yeah, what I talked about in my presentation is that we have new suites and test cases. So let's develop. Uh, let's start with developing our new suite. So suite is simply a, a collection of test cases. So let's say it's registration suite and these are test cases. This is our test case. So let's uh, simply write new form. Yeah. OK, so we can see that all of these controls are editable, so we can uh, simply manually uh, put our test cases here. But we are going to do is we are going to record it. OK, so here is the record and in the recording mode, my app will be di uh, displayed. <laughs> OK, so my app should be displayed. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's time for me to change my ISP. <sighs> OK, so my app is being displayed and here you'll see that I have um, selected the let's say it's for training. Sorry. So here you can see that in the recording mode, whatever I input in my app, it's all recording here, right? So I'll just click the registration. In my success screen, I'll just click this and we are done. So in the recording mode, everything that I did or every every interaction that I did with my application, it is all recorded here. So all of these actions have been recorded by the uh, record um, recording mode and my new test case is uh, like automatically there right here right so what i can do another thing is i can copy this test case and in the same suite i'll just simply paste it uh someone is unmuted and I, i'm getting some noise background noise if you could mute yourself that would be helpful okay so for this new uh, test case i'll just rename it as new form 2. so what i can do is i can select this test case and I can simply run this test case, so I can simply play this test case. But first, what we need to do in Canvas app, we need to always be mindful about saving and publishing our whatever we do with our apps. So let's save it. Mm -hmm. Save it, but publishing will be done when I want to play it. <sighs> Publish it, publish it. Hmm. 
<laughs> uh, I think I need to switch to data. Okay, I'll switch to data and then I'll get back. Uh, what is it? One plus five? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I am audible, right? And you can see my screen. <laughs> okay, I'm not audible and I'm not there in the call. You can see my screen. You cannot see my screen. What is it? Anyone? Thumbs up. <laughs> you can see my. You can see my. Screen. Yes, yes, we can. So see we can screen. play this. See the test studio, right? My test case playing. Yeah. So on test case start is uh, done. I my data cards are having. Their inputs, so I've selected the register. My success button is clicked and yeah, this case has been completed, so we can do this. Now let's go to our SharePoint list, my data source, and here what happens is all the inputs, uh, you know, all the new members or new uh, users that I've added are listed in my SharePoint data source. So uh, that is all right. Now, another thing that I would like to talk about is that, uh, like I said, we can um, edit our uh, test cases. So here we can see that, uh, you know, these are the help menus uh, which will allow us, which will allow us to know that, you know, if we want to uh, put one um, a step uh, up or above or, you know, we want to put a step below or whatever, and we can simply change this um, inputs as well. Actually, I need to change my inputs. <laughs> this internet really suck all of, suck up all my energy. So yeah, I have to change my input as well because all of both of these uh, test cases have the same input value. So what I can do is uh, instead of training, I want to put it to let's say interview, and I want to change these uh, uh, input values so what i can do is i can again uh, in my new form 2 or new test case i'll simply record it and recording it uh, uh, will simply override all of my um, previous values so i'll say did i say interview or training i forgot <laughs> Yeah, I'll simply register and this is taking those values. Uh, and I am done. Yeah, OK, so this uh, changed all of these input values uh, as we can see. So in the suite, I have two test cases. Here we'll have uh, Harry Potter and here we have Ron Harris. Uh, now let's uh, go ahead and edit a test case. Uh, let's edit this new form too. Uh, so here, uh, like I, you know, in my pre pre presentation, I mentioned about the functions that we can use in test cases. So here is a function uh, we have already used like that is select and set property. I think the, these are the most common functions that that we keep using in Canvas app as well as in Test Studio itself. So what we can do, uh, we can add and we can simply insert a step above or below. So we'll uh, insert a trace. Like I mentioned in my uh, presentation as well, trace is simply for debug debugging. So we uh, want to see where our application flow is running towards or heading towards, then we can simply use trace. So new test case simply like this. We also want to trace if a new um, or, or if a new client has been added. So we can simply uh, start saying in the trace uh, trace simply put a, put in a statement like new user 
added things like this. OK, so trace is used only just for you know debugging or tracing where our application is headed to. Now, another thing that we can do is assert, and assert is really important, and I really like that function as well. So before assert, let's uh, do one thing. Let's set a global variable, right? So after trace, I want to just add a step below. So I want to say set and I'll simply, um, you know what we use in Canvas app is we use this set function to uh, assign a variable a value, right? So uh, I'll simply say I'll create a, sorry, I'll simply do this and what I want to do is I want to count rows of my data source. So what was my data source is test studio 2021. So for now. Yeah, so the value of my global variable to the rows of my data source. Now in my assert, uh, I want to add a step below a register and I want to add a assert, assert function. So for assert, I'll simply go ahead and I'll say, um, I'll just, uh, if my global variable uh, count is equal to the of my so here what I'm doing is I'm simply adding an expression sorry adding an expression here to check if uh, this value holds true or false and if it holds false what I want to do is I simply want to say failed okay that is all I uh, what I did is I edited this test case and I put in some trace statements or taste trace functions and I put the state set function and I also put in the assert function. Now let's simply go ahead, save this. And I only want to run one taste case at a time for right now. So I only want to run the taste case that I recently edited. So I go ahead, I, the same test case has been selected. So play it, publish it. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, just to interrupt, like, like uh, we cannot see your screen. Yeah, really? You cannot see my screen? Okay. Uh. Is my screen visible now? Yeah, it is. Yeah. OK. OK, I'll play this. Uh, is the test studio visible now? Yeah. Mm, is it running the test case that I am playing? Oh, uh, you are on the register form. Yeah, yeah, it's I think it's playing. It's playing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so did you see all of my test case, all of these steps passed, the, these green tick marks? I hope yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so my test case has passed. It has uh, traced uh, my both of my trace uh, functions. It has set a global variable. It has asserted and on test case complete is over. So we are done with this. Now, now go ahead in my SharePoint list and we can see that, oh my God, I've really, really run a lot of tastes, I think. So I'll simply clear this. Oh, no, let's not clear first. Uh, so that is all about like uh, using functions in test this studio so we can add more functions and you know we can make our test cases more intuitive and interactive now another thing that i would like to cover about the studio is this so these are some three properties of uh, test studio uh, on test case start I, I think it was recently uh, developed or recently released uh, so what are these properties are it's used basically to set up our test or uh, mm, process our test cases or process our test results. So on test case start, uh, the name itself says, <laughs> you know, before starting our test case. So uh, on test case start, what it does, it set up our test. So uh, 
you know, normally in any software development life cycle, we have some prerequisites before running our test cases. So on test case start is just that. Uh, sometimes you want our, you know, most of the times we want our test cases to run from the beginning of the app or the front page of the app. Like for in my case, I want my application to start from the registration form. So on test case start is used to define the prerequisites. OK, so I want my uh, test case to start from the uh, from the um, what registration screen. So. I mentioned previously as well that you know any functions that we use in our Canvas app, we can use in our test studio as well. So navigate is something that we can use in our Canvas app and we can use it here as well. I don't know why it's not taking registration screen. <laughs> OK, I don't have a quote. Yeah, so yeah. We can do that. So on test case start is basically used to define the prerequisites on test case complete and on test suite complete. So these two things are uh, actually used to process the test results. So after running a test case, we get some test results, right? And what do we want to do with it? We may either want to uh, save it in a SharePoint list or in a Dataverse, or we want to email it, email the result, uh, uh, results to our colleagues or clients, or we want to uh, simply notify someone in our teams uh, about the test results. So we can do all of those things using the on test case complete and on test suite complete. Uh, features. So let's do one thing and let's say I. So another thing why we need to use on test case complete and on test suite complete is I mentioned previously that you know we can send a link to our team members uh, the uh, test cases. We can send the link to test uh, to our team members and they they can simply play it in the browser. But when playing in the browser, the test studio is not open, right? So they have no way of knowing what happened with the test result or what is the test result. So another thing that we can do, uh, the another another use of on test case complete and on test suite complete is that you know it allows our users to understand what happened with our test cases. If it uh, passed, if it failed, uh, if what whatever happened. Um, bad network quality when I saw, but I really don't understand why. So okay, I have um, I want to notify my clients about what happened. Um, you know, uh, uh, on running a test case. So here I'll simply put in a notify and let's try once. Okay, so save it. <clears throat> OK, here I want to delete all of these. Let's start with a clean slate. Yeah, it's done. It's done and it's done. OK, I want to do this. It's saved, so let's publish. Mm. You're understanding whatever I'm saying, right? about this test studio and everything that we are go going through. Uh, if there are any questions, then you can throw them at me right now because we are waiting. Huh. <clears throat> OK, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. Any questions still now? Right about uh, these functions, about the studio, about test cases and test suites, anything. We've lost connection, yeah, exactly. Okay, I want this to publish. Not this. I want this text case to publish. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if it's my internet. I've changed my internet to data. I don't know. Yeah, OK, so let's play it. <sighs> On test case start, uh, that was 
our um, navigation to registration screen. Yes, uh, trace has completed. Uh, my data card has values in them. Another trace has completed uh, setting a global variable. Yes, it has been done. Um, so yes, my data cards are getting input. Uh, I'm selecting my registration screen and the assert should complete. Yes, and on test case complete completed and I have a notification. Yes. <laughs> OK, so it ran successfully. Thank God about that. OK, so uh, one more thing that I, we, that we can do is um, I told you that we can do a lot of things with the test results that we get uh, from our test cases. Uh, we can store them. We can um, notify uh, our colleagues in teams. We can email them. We can store them in our dataverse or SharePoint list, whatever. So what I've done is I have created a SharePoint list, two SharePoint list actually. So yeah, if we can see the outcome here as well. So two test, uh, two uh, SharePoint list I've created to store my test case and test suite results. So this is for my test case result, test case 2021 and test suite 2021 results. So another thing that I forgot to cover here is uh, that on test case complete and on test suite complete, both of them give us a property or a record uh, or let's say a variable, right? And that variable is called test case result for test case uh, on complete. Huh. Looking for no, it's, it's not you. <laughs> test case result. Yeah, the thing about preview and experimental modes. Yes, thank you. So test case result has these properties, the end time, uh, start time, you know, the end time of a test case, the start time of a test case. If it's a success, then the true or false values. If it's a failure, sorry. We were not able to hear you. I, I think you got dropped. Okay. Now, now we are, now we are able. You're able to hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you about that. Uh, so uh, where was I? <laughs> so OK, on test case complete and on test suite complete give us two variables. Uh, these are a test case result for on test case complete. So test case result has all of these properties. Uh, the end time, start time, um, you know, when the test case started, when the test case completed, uh, the success. If the test case ran successfully, then uh, the value is true. If uh, not, then it's false. The test failure misses. If our test case failed, then why it failed? One era. All of these things are given, uh, all of these properties are given on uh, the test case result. Likewise, we have another uh, variable called test suite uh, result. Come on. Something about preview mode that I really dislike is this. So, so the test suite result has these properties, the end time, start time, suite description, suite ID, suite ID and test, uh, test case ID. I think uh, we all know these are the unique identifiers and we have here we have test failed and test pass. So a suite contains a uh, different or many test cases. So test failed uh, will simply give us the count of test that failed and test suite test. Sorry, test passed will uh, simply give us the count of test cases that passed within our test suites. So we can use these variables to uh, you know store uh, anywhere or stored values. So on the basis of that in what I've done in my data source is for test case complete 2021 results for the sh in the SharePoint list. I've simply created the columns that I want uh, the values of from the test case result. Uh, and similarly, I have done the same thing for test suite uh, 2021 results as well. Now what we can do is uh, OK, I'll let's 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 delete this. Yeah. OK. Now uh, what we can do is I'll, I OK, I simply deleted the notification, right? OK, I'll copy my function that I've already written. Yeah, and what I can do is for uh, putting in my values in my SharePoint, uh, I can use a patch function, so I use it. Here. 
so what I've done here is my uh, data source is test case 2021 results, the SharePoint. I have done a default because I want to keep updating it with all the uh, test case that I run. Uh, here are these are the columns in my data source in my SharePoint, and I want these values to go ahead and be there in my columns and traces. So traces is another uh, thing that's very important. Um, that's important in this uh, function as well. So traces is simply a table. It gives us a table uh, which contains a timestamp and a message. So all the trace actions that we have put in our test case, uh, it will uh, evaluate those and it will give us a timestamp when the trace ran and it will give us the message or what the trace action or tra trace message has and it also um, saves or it also puts the assert messages uh, in the table. So this is what it is and on this suite complete as well. I want to put in another. Yeah, so it simply is just that test suite 2021 results. Uh, I'll update it with all the flow, all the test suite runs, and I have put in all, all of these uh, values. OK, so let's save it again. <coughs> Sorry. OK, I want to publish this first. <sighs> So in my SharePoint, uh, these are all empty. So let's see. Yeah, it will run. It should. On this case, start navigates my uh, screen to registration form. Trace. Yes, inputting all the values in my data cards. <coughs> Setting a global variable. Data cards, data cards, uh, it will register. Assert is done, yes. And on test case complete. Yeah, so I've been notified and let's go ahead uh, and check if uh, these things worked. So yes, I have a new um, item listed in my SharePoint data source. Um, hmm, okay, test case results did not work. OK, it did. OK, so I have a test case ID, a unique identifier, uh, the test case name that I ran, the start time, end time. It was a success, so it's true. And here is the trace uh, that I used. So uh, my first trace was new test case and then a new user added and it passed. So in my assert statement, it's just it's a says passed. OK, and for test suite. OK, I hope this suite ran, but I don't know why it did not. Uh, something about this. Preview mode, so OK, it's it's there. It should work. Uh, we can simply save it and do it again. OK. Let's play again. It should work. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. My mistake, my bad. Um, so what we did is we just ran a test case. We didn't run a test suite. So how is like on test suite complete going to run? <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. It's my mistake. Yeah, so we just ran a test case and uh, it ran the on test case start. It ran on test case complete. So on test case, this suite complete obviously is not going to run because we're not running a suite, right? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so in the suite we have um, two test cases. <clears throat> So um, I want to make one uh, test case fail and make one test case pass. Uh, this would be the last thing that I want to do in this demo. Uh, so um, like I mentioned earlier uh, that, you know, um, the on test case start is used actually for in order to determine the prerequisites. So I have set here a global variable, right? So why set a global variable in all the test cases, right? We just want to set it for once for all the test cases and we just want to get things done. So let's do this. Let's remove this tape from here. Let's go to view. Go to view. Uh, I have used the navigation, so I'll simply set the global variable here. Let's do this. Let's delete this step. Yeah, and save this. I uh, I want my new form test case to fail, so let's do that. And we'll run um, the whole suite and we'll see if the uh, on test suite complete passes or fails. OK, so uh, I want to assert below. And the same thing I'm going to do, but OK, let's just copy this. Damn, right? 
I'll simply put this as 10 or something. Yes. Okay. So this should fail, right? Because it's not 10 and it's not more than 10 or whatever. It, it shouldn't be. It should be whatever the rows in my data source are. So let's save this. So we, what we are expecting is we are expecting my new form test case to uh, fail and new form two test case to pass. Uh, let's publish this. Uh, and while it's publishing, I want to clear and start from the very beginning again. OK, so I'll delete. I'll delete this as well. Test suite result has nothing. Yes. So let's go ahead. It's still publishing. Wow. Hmm. It's published now in the whole suite. I'm in the whole suite, so now the whole suite thing should run, you know. So uh, if I was only playing this test case, then only this test case will be played. If I'm here and I'm selecting this test case, then only this test case will be played, but I'm in the whole suite now, so I want all of these to play. So let's go ahead. OK, registration suite, new form. Let's start. Test case start is from the uh, registration form. It has, I think, probably set a global variable. My uh, data cards are getting values um, registered. It's a success. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Now assertions would fail. Yes, it failed. And here we have the failed message as well, but it goes on ahead to play the another test case as well because they are completely independent of each other, right? So even if my previous test case has failed, my another test case needs to run. So this is one good thing about the studio. Yes, passed. And on test suite also, uh, on test suite complete also passed. Let's go. Uh, OK, so here in my SharePoint site, what we can see is I need to refresh. OK, so there are two entries. So uh, one was from my new form and another was from my new form uh, two. Uh, so two test cases ran. I'm sorry, uh, my test case. So one failed and one passed. So the new form uh, success is false and here uh, in my test failure message, I can see that something was wrong or something was off with my assert statement or assert function. And here my trace uh, says that it has failed. Yeah. Now my new form two has passed, so the success is true. And all of these traces say that they have passed. Now my test suite result, the test suite ID is present, my test suite name is present, and one test has passed and one test has failed. Uh, that is all. Um, so I guess today what we learned is uh, about Test Studio. Uh, it's still in experimental mode, so there are some glitches, uh, but uh, we are, uh, you know, since we are the Power Platform developers, we are responsible to make it better and robust. Um, so yeah, that is all. Uh, I think we learned about functions in Test Studio uh, that are the same as functions that we use in Canvas apps. We learned about uh, on test case complete, the prerequisites like, you know, let's, let's just map it with the uh, normal test uh, testing cycle like uh, on test case start. It, uh, it's like basically the prerequisites in any test cases on test case complete will have um, on test case complete or on test suite complete will have, uh, you know, will allow us to process the test results, whatever we want to do with them. Um, that is all. I think I'm done with my presentation. Any questions? Guys, any questions? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, is, the, is this test studio only limited to Power Apps, or like we can do a lot of tests for the motor drone apps and other, uh, other like Power Platform apps as well? Uh, yeah, like I said, right, it's in the experimental mode and it's not been developed to uh, test for model driven apps. It's currently only for Canvas apps. So, yeah, that's, that's a limitation, I'd say. Also, one more thing to add on, like uh, if we have like got a multiple test cases that are already developed for certain projects, and we have already maintained that on Azure DevOps, uh, is it possible for to get all those test cases from the Azure DevOps and directly like play it on the test studio? Uh, from the Azure DevOps, uh, actually they are uh, going to release it soon. So there is a talk about releasing, um, you know, the Azure DevOps pipeline uh, and uh, linking it to the test studio. Uh, I think end of 2021. So yeah, uh, hopefully it's coming soon. Any more?
Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so any more questions you can contact me straight in LinkedIn or Twitter. Thank you so much. Over to you, Pradeep. Yeah, thank you so much, Samrain. Really, uh, really knowledgeable, uh, a really insightful session by you today. Uh, so hope everyone loved it. Uh, if there's no further questions, uh, Samrain, I would suggest that you would, uh, if you could uh, share your contact details in the uh -huh. chat box. Yeah, it would, be, it would be great, I think. Yeah, sure, sure.